What's up, tricksters and trick setters watching this VOD review on the second YouTube channel? Today we have another tier 3 sub VOD review. And on the coaching table, we have Demi X, which is a jet main playing on Icebox in a Platinum 2 lobby. So, let's first see what Demi X has to say to us. So, Guten Tag, Papito! I've never really played a FPS game before, I started development exactly one year ago. I really enjoy the game and can tell that I got better in the last year. As long as you enjoy this game, good for you. As you can see in my tracker, I'm not a jet main, I'm uh -huh, not a jet main, but as I've gotten better and more confident these last months, I wanted to learn one duelist, and I think jet is the most fun out of them. I mean, to be honest, like, yeah, like, I mean, Jet is always gonna be S plus tier, like, uh, for ranked solo queue, you know. I don't know. I, th I think, like, we're, like, maybe one nerf away from Jet being garbage. Like, I don't know, if they uh, do something more to the dash ability, she's out. But as long as she has this dash ability as it is right now, you know, good. But, but you know, one, two more nerfs and... Jet meta is like, you know, you're only gonna see like Izo, Reyna, Phoenix, Yoru, and that type of stuff. Now, I feel like I don't use her dash often enough at the moment, and I'm not sure in which situations I can use it more often. The best advice that I can give you for the jet dash. Obviously, you wanna use the dash ability to take the space, you know, execute the bomb sets, retake, and stuff like that. But, the best piece of advice. If there is even a 5% of chance for you to fight enemies, use the dash ability. It's better to be safe rather than sorry. Period. D done. Literally done. So, you think there is a 5% of chance for, to fight the enemies? Activate the dash ability. Let's fight the enemies. Done. Of course, like if you're holding, you know, elevated off angles, if you have some other way to escape the fight with the enemies, don't waste your dash ability. And that's it. And also, also, I never really played any other guns than Vandal or Phantom. Ghost, Spectre and Bulldog sometimes. Therefore, I'm not the best with the operator, but I'm trying my best to add a weapon to my arsenal. Generally speaking, in Valorant, like, you should, you should, uh, you should master every weapon. Like, you, you should be equal with every weapon that you play, because that makes you a valuable, valuable asset to your team in every single round that you play. Eco, hull by, force by, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, in every round, you should feel like you're playing some kind of a full by round, and you have a chance to win that round. So basically, you know, Shorty, Guardian, Odin, Operator, Outlaw, Marshal, Sheriff, Vandal, Phantom, Bulldog, Spectre, Stinger, like, Judge, everything. You should master, and you should use based on the economy that you have, economy that enemies have, and of course, like, what type of strategy or tactic you want to Execute and also what's good for a specific map, you know on some maps like judge and stinger are so Fucking broken that you know, it's so good to use them for eco and hull by rounds like uh, on other maps like you know Outlaw, I mean to be honest right now outlaw is such a good weapon in every like uh, Anti-eco round on every map on a defender side So, you know You need to play every weapon and especially if you're playing jet like you need to master operator and if you want to master the operator uh, I'm gonna give you some tips uh, after the VOD review. Like, basically, in As The Coach channel, right here, uh, tomorrow I'm going to answer on this que question, how to approach learning operator. I'm gonna write in-depth, you know, a, a short in-depth guide, how to master the weapon, and what, sh what you should do with the, with the operator, like, like how to actually become better with op. So just pay attention on this forum, you're gonna find your answer there. Uh, okay, I mean, like, there's no no questions, nothing, like, the guy just introduced himself, so we can move into the tracker. Playtime. Okay, I mean, he started playing in, in episode 6, act 1, he went from silver 1 to platinum 2, you know, consistent. Like, uh, consistent and gradual improvement. Not bad. We were stuck in goal for some time. And now we are Platinum 2. But generally speaking, you know, like, when it comes to the playtime in Valorant, I'm gonna repeat one more time. The minimum, optimal, amount of games that you want to play if you want to see some serious improvements. And consistent and gradual, like, you know, performance. 
three matches per day. Like, without three matches per day, like, you, you cannot cry that you're heart sick in some kind of an elo or some kind of a rank. So this is okay, you know, 120 hours is good. Uh, now your win rate obviously can be much better, like, uh, and we need to see what you can do there. Uh, this act, okay, not bad. I mean, ADR, fine, like, ADR doesn't matter that much as, as long as you're getting the, the most necessary kills. And as long as you have the impactful kills, that's good. 1.10 KD. Okay, fine, good. KST is a bit of a problem. Like, especially when I see this type of a KST for the Jet and, and Omen players. Bro. You need to figure, figure out some kind of a better timing to execute the sites. To fight the enemies. And you need to be, you know, f focus more on the refray game. Like, essentially having a KST below 76% is... 75% is not good at all. Like, you need to focus a bit more on a team play game, better, like, a refray game, and that's it. Like, you need to pick a more smarter and efficient gunfights with the enemies. And we'll see in the water review what you can do a bit better. Overall, Herschel percentage doesn't matter. You know, 90% is fine, because you're still using, like, uh, you know, operator, shorty, that type of shit. Uh, and the agents that you main is like Omen, Cypher, Jet, Sova, Viper, Gecko. Uh, to be honest, you know, if, if I was you, I would just, you know, in a, in a Platinum or Gold ELO, especially in lobbies below Iron 1 to Immortal 3, I would never fill in my life. Like, I would just main two agents, master them completely, insta-lock them, done. And if they get locked, or I really need to fill, for some reason, I'm gonna have two additional characters, up to Immortal 3. So, I don't know, based on your statistics and what you play, I would just stick to the Cypher, Omen, Viper, and Jet. And that's it. Like, yes, your win rate with Jet is poor, but uh, with Jet you just need to figure out, like, actually, fuck the Viper. Fuck the Viper. Like, stick to the Cypher, Omen, Phoenix, and Jet. Ph Phoenix is a really good agent. Like, I, I don't know why, why people are sleeping on Phoenix. Like, uh, I cannot wait to do unranked to Radiant series with Phoenix. Because his, his you know, his flashes are undodgeable. And uh, he has some really good executes that you can do. Uh, and outplays. Like, uh, stick with those, with those four agents. And you can play Viper, like, so as some kind of a fill on Breeze, maybe. So... Based on your statistics, and based on what you want to main right now, this is what I would do. So, let, let me see the maps. Okay, let's talk about it. So, uh... Icebox. Icebox, definitely just main pick. Uh, Omen fill. Viper fill after... Omen and Cypher fill. Actually, fuck, fuck Cypher for this ELO, just uh, uh, Jet main, Omen fill, actually flex, and Viper fill after Immortal 3. Now, Sunset, uh, sunset I mean, Cypher is really good, like, uh, you know, you can, you can switch between Jet and Cypher, because on Sunset, like, uh, Cypher is Giga Chad. And you can just play Omen as, and, you know, Phoenix as some kind of a flex feel, like, uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, split. Mm, in your ELO, like, Jet is really good on split. I wouldn't play anything else, like, both Jet and Omen can be, like, your, like, main. Mm, Phoenix can be some kind of a flex pick, I don't know, fill, and that's it. But he's... Mm, jet main, definitely. Phoenix flex. Phoenix or Reyna, actually. Flex and Viper fill if you really need to fill in something. Ascent. Uh, jet main. Phoenix and Omen. Flex. And... Uh, that's basically it. Uh, Lotus... Hmm. I don't know, on Lotus I would try both, like, uh, you know, 
I will main all three of these agents equally, to be honest. You know, because all three of these agents are really good. Really, really good. Uh, on, on Lotus. And it, it's really up to your playstyle and what you prefer, to be honest. Uh, what I forgot about is a Cypher. Uh, so basically, like, uh, on Split, we can go Cypher as a fill. On Breeze, you can place, basically, you know, Phoenix as Cypher as a Flex. Ascent, Omen, Flex, Cypher, Fill. Lotus, Jet, Omen, blah, blah, blah. Cypher. Fill. And uh, Bind... To be honest, Jet Omen should be main. And Phoenix and Cypher can be some kind of a flex. So if I was you, you know, Platinum 2, with these type of statistics that you have, like, I wouldn't touch, you know, you're maining four agents that are good on, in a lot of different scenarios, and all, uh, in a lot of different team compositions. And other than this, like, if you already like playing Jet Omen, Cypher and Phoenix, just stick to them. Only on Breeze, like, I mean, you can play, you know, you can probably solo carry on Breeze with any team composition, because literally team compositions on that map don't matter. It's a cancer map for solo queue and team play. Like, uh, you can maybe play Omen up to Immortal 1 and carry still, but, you know, Viper is kind of like a necessity on that map, and you need to... You need to have Viper on your team. If you don't have Viper, like, uh, your chances of winning on that map is, like, maybe, like, 20 or 10... Like, 20% lower than with any other controller. Now... Mm, guns. Okay, this is good. This is actually really, really good. You know, 1, 1, 0, 3, 1... Like, your loadout statistics is actually mega good, to be honest. Like this, this is how this should look like. Very good. Keep it up. Nothing else to, to talk about here. And definitely, like, you know, th there should be some kind of a versatility here. This is not bad, you know, like, try to practice the stinger, pre you know, apply the shorty a bit more. There are a lot of the maps where the judge is really good with the... with the Jet, Omen, and those type of characters. You're on a good path, to be honest. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't add anything here. Like, uh, definitely your mechanics are not really the best, you know, like, 26% headshot ratio with the Vandal is optimal. Not the worst, not the best. You know, probably your mechanics can get, uh, get a bit better. But overall, not bad, not bad. Like, like this act, you're, you're on, a, on a good path, to be honest, on a good path. Good statistics, not bad. Nothing else to talk about. Let, let me just check something here. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Let's see your gameplay. Let's see your gameplay. Like, generally, I hate, like, reviewing these uh, trackers, like, uh, because they mean nothing. Like, uh, whenever I'm doing private coaching sessions, like, uh, I'm always forcing the players to make a data tracking document instead of the stupid tracker. Because, uh, Tracker.gg doesn't tell me, like, 50% of inf important information that I need to know about you. So, you know, like, these statistics, like, yeah, you know, th those are my initial recommendations for you. But let's see what you're doing in the game. Sorry, guys, I'm... I'm... I did an Icebox spot review yesterday. <laughs> Who are you all? So I'm like, you know, I, I want to do Icebox again! But I guess we need to. Defending. Okay. Okay. Listen. Let's talk about the icebox uh, again, I guess. So, on a defender side, A site is your default site, number one priority. B site, secondary priority, mid, third priority. Essentially, as a jet player, you should be playing mid only, only if you are 90% confident that enemies are gonna push mid or if uh, 
I don't know. Enemies are playing some kind of an eco round, and you know, there's a huge chance enemies are gonna go there. Or if one enemy is lurking through mid 24 7, and you wanna punish that enemy. Otherwise, as a jet player, there's enormous amount of off angles, outplays that you can do on A set and B site. So you should not be wasting your potential in the mid area of the map. You know, if you have the operator, you think enemies are gonna go mid, sure, you can pick the mid through the window. From the boiler, bottom mid, uh, under the tube, fine. But if you're not certain where the enemies are gonna go, play A site. And if you think the enemies are gonna go B, play play B site, essentially. Now, uh, when it comes to the first round with a jet, like generally, you know, you can do whatever the hell you want. Yesterday I explained, like in my Icebox spot review, like, I don't know. All of the things that you can do with Omen, you can do with the Jet as well. Also, you, you have my ranked playbook with the Jet on my Discord server. I've explained completely what you should do in the first round, second round, third round with the Jet. I've also explained, like, in the exclusive coaching videos that I've shared with you on Icebox, what you should do. S you know, one of the best things that you can do, like, is maybe... You know, pick up the Sheriff and play some of these off angles and abuse the verticality to fuck up the enemies. And essentially that's it. Like, because you have my prank playbook, you have my exclusive coaching videos, plus yesterday, I did a VOD review on Icebox. I'm not gonna cover the map that much and what you should do based on the rounds. Let's focus on your problems and let's see what you can do a bit better. Okay, so the first round... We're doing the aggression. I don't know if I like this, like, to be honest. Uh, first of all, I don't know if I would ever do this with a classic pistol. Number one. Number two, if you're... Number two. If you're going for this aggression, you really... You really need to tell one of your teammates to destroy the Sova arrow for you. Number three, I think with a jet, uh, it is much easier. You know, if you want to go for this type of play, just glide. Onto this position, peek the enemies and, you know, that's it. Number four. If you want to use the ropes to aggress the enemies in the A main area of the map, you, you don't use the ropes from this position, from top of the A tower. You use the ropes from bottom of these boxes right here. Why? Because naturally you're faster. Also, when you're using the ropes, you don't need to shift all the way as you're using the ropes. Look at the look at the circle up on the minimap. Basically, all the way up to this spot, you know, you can do this. And as you're crossing the fourth end generator, that is where you want to like uh uh you know either shift or deattach yourself from the ropes. So you're just losing a timing, essentially. If you're doing this type of a crap. My enemies can already, you know, like... Pick you from the belt and that type of shit. Like, why? You know, there's no reason. Like, uh, just come up here on the edge. Attach on the ropes. Go all the way fast here. And then shift. Maybe we can glide and... Bop, bop, bop. Or maybe we can glide... And bop, bop, bop. With the dash ability. But, as I said in the first round... Personally, I would never aggress the enemies... I feel there is no reason to, especially like uh, I will never aggress them alone. There are so many good strategies, tactics, and off angles that you can abuse on the A set that this is completely unnecessary for the first round of uh, Icebox. Please, for the love of God, if you have Chamber in your team as the only Sentinel on, on Icebox, always tell the Chamber to place his trademark either somewhere here. Where he, where he can play around it on the A site, or, I don't know, here, or he, here, anywhere in the in, in, in the kitchen. Like, we need to have the kitchen control, we need to have the information whether or not enemies can be there, and essentially that's it, but, you know, playing a icebox with only a chamber is interesting. Okay. Good that we're doing a rotation under the tube, now we need to clear the window, clear the window, we don't have the info about that. Listen, like, the best piece of advice that anyone can give you in Valorant, 
is like uh, whenever you're doing some kind of a you know rotation on both attackers and defenders side uh, if you lost the timing onto a specific area of the map where enemies can be somewhere always pre-assume that enemies are there and that enemies are gonna play in that specific area of the map you know we, we don't have the information if the enemies are below the boiler on the right side if the enemies are in the tube in the window if the enemies are under the tube uh, in the kitchen in the mid area of the map like you need to clear all of these angles basically here bam 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 one by one and then we can go for the retake onto the beast site spike planted this is very risky but Probably enemies are playing as five. Right, Aiden. Let's see that again. Listen, man, like, uh, if you already have a classic pistol in the first round with, uh, with, with Jet on, on Icebox, if you're really in the B set, like, generally speaking, when you're playing Jet, uh, your main focus is to pressure the enemies. At the back of the yellow as soon as you can like that should be your utmost uh, priority so basically if i have a classic with a light shield two smokes and i'm retaking the b set through here just you know activate the dash ability try to peek the enemies with the dash ability and try to dash diagonally towards the yellow box and especially with a classic pistol you know you can triple shot the enemies here delete them come into their face Pressure the enemies from the right side. The retail for your teammates is much easier. Here, for an example, is the moment of time when you should actually use the dash ability with Jet. Like, essentially, whenever, but literally whenever, uh, there is even a slightest chance that you're gonna fight the enemies, you should not... Engage into a fight without the dash ability. Like, just remember one thing when you're water reviewing yourself and doing the self water reviews. If you die and your dash ability is not activated or you didn't use your dash ability to escape a certain fight or a certain scenario, that is the pointless death and death that could have been prevented. So, every single time you die during your self water reviews uh, and you die with a dash ability not activated is when you could have done something better. Like your dash ability, you know, is a tool to take space, to pressure the enemies, and a tool to basically like uh, uh, pick uh, an incremental gunfight with the enemies. Like when you have the dash ability activated, you should never commit to the fights with the enemies. You're only staying in a fight for maybe like one bullet one burst fire maximum two burst fires after the second burst fire like uh, that gunfight is already 50 50 you should disengage that fight and try to pick another fight that is somehow working in your favor you know like uh, based on the picker's advantage angle perception advantage uh, raw angle you know advantage or you know fight together with your teammates stuff like that Okay. One enemy remaining. Okay, I mean, to be honest, uh, not, you know, your teammates were pressuring the, these two enemies uh, aggressively in the B main area of the map. Uh, generally speaking, one advice that I follow in rank solo queue uh, quite a lot is that uh, you should give this job of planting and defusing the spike in the hands of uh, in the hands of your teammates. Like, it should always be better if you are the one fighting the enemies, pressuring the enemies, and actually, like, uh, you know, you're controlling the outcome of the round, and your teammates are, are the ones that are actually defusing the spike, planting the spike, and doing that type of shit. But since, like, two or three of your teammates are, like, Reloading. pushing into the enemies, like, and no one is defusing the spike, sure, fine, like, you know, no defuse the spike. Now, in the second round of Icebox, no matter which agent I'm playing, if you win the first round, always purchase 
the outlaw with a light shield or heavy shield utility go for the fast peek through the window like this and hold the mid area of the map try to bop bop take some kills on mid if the enemies are pushing yay just rotate you know onto the a side fast you can glide up here just bop 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 go onto your teammates if the enemies are pushing b you know we can just do a fast rotation towards b set and that's it in this second round not even jesus christ can tell you what enemies will do but usually you know when the enemies like lose the first round in the second round a lot of the players on this map like to either default do some kind of a lurk and flank through mid or they will try to pressure you onto the b site so the best gamble is just defending mid area of the map and play a fast rotation towards a and b also another rule that you should follow uh whenever enemies are eco or halbai on defender on attacker's side don't aggress the enemies don't showcase the enemies your usual playstyle. don't showcase the enemies your best strategies tactics uh executes whatever like just play Valorant in the most boring way possible but here we 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 don't need to perform any crazy strategy, tactic, peak, like, uh, just use the common, you know, angles, uh, off angles, like, uh, go for the body shots, abuse the reflex potential, gun advantage, the round is over. You already won that round, essentially. And also, there is not a single moment of time where in a second round, you're playing without a shield. Like, in the second round, you're either purchasing light shield with outlaw, or you're purchasing heavy shield with some other weapon. But if you win the first round and you're playing the second anti eco round, the worst thing you can do is playing that round without a shield. Like literally, you're so much easier target for the enemies to kill with a classic pistol, sheriff, and I don't know, frenzies, ghost. I don't, I don't know what they're gonna force. And you didn't win the first round just to be an easier target to kill in a second round. So whenever you win the first round, you're either buying a light shield with the outlaw or heavy shield with some other some other weapon. Uh Bro, like uh, I, I don't know what to say about this. Like uh, first of all, when you're taking the space aggressively here. Always start here and try to get onto this position without using, uh, uh, with, without like uh, making the sound, this metal sound on the pipes. Like try to get onto this position by gliding and then picking the enemies. Or simply just, you know, glide all the way from this position and then from this position, like contest the enemies. But to be honest, in this round, there is absolutely no reason for you to to aggress the enemies. Like, like you have the outlaw, abuse the long-range gunfights, go for the body shots, enemies don't have a heavy shield, like, why the fuck are you even here, you know, like, it's stupid. I mean, if I heard an enemy this close to me, and I have the vent the outlaw, get the fuck out, like, immediately, like, play on top of, on top of the screens, on top of the rafters, like... It's just pointless to... Dash ability activated? No? There. Never mind. Power off. Now, one thing that you should always keep track of on this map is whether or not enemies can have a timing to push you through kitchen and through mid. Like, whenever you don't see all of the enemies going through the choke point, Always ask yourself, did enemies have a timing to get into the kitchen? Are the enemies under the tube? Can enemies be in my anal cavity in the A-link, B-link area of the map? And pay attention to the timings. Like on this map, you consistently need to track on the minimap whether or not your teammates are holding the mid area of the map. And also whether or not your sentinel's utility can scout for the enemies in the mid area of the map. So if, you know, there's only Sova right now on Amen, obviously the enemies are either in Kitchen right now, or A-Link. But to be honest, this second round, second anti round, you should always start passively. 
holding the mid from the window and just deleting the enemies that are going through mid and playing a fast rotation between A site and B site. We are on our way. Yeah. Yeah. Spike cool. planted. One enemy remaining. But this Cypher can still be in the two behind, you know? Down here. Never mind. Okay. Okay. I mean, now, now you know what to do in a second round. Like, literally, you know. You, you cannot sell the mid area of the map in a second anti-eco round. It is just uh, absolutely stupid. Like, absolutely stupid. Now, uh, in this third round, the bonus round, uh, the absolutely best idea is to gamble that enemies are going to push A site. And uh, if you have the outlaw, once again, <clears throat> there is absolutely no reason for you to aggress the enemies. Because there are so many good off angles, so many good positions that you can play to get easy kills. It's just stupid, basically. And while we're playing Ace in this round, it is our default site. Uh, chances are just higher that enemies are going to push A against the enemies that are bonus. So, like, uh, don't AFK, please, you know, if possible. Okay. I mean, in, in this round, the, the main mistake is, brother, try not to be AFK, uh, you know, at the start of the round. Like, in this round, if I had an outlaw, in this bonus round, what we can do, we can maybe hide here, wait for the enemies to start pressing the W key to maybe reach that position, this position, or to take the ropes. Activate the dash ability, bap bap, easy kill, get the fuck out. Maybe we can hold this off angle here, you know, bop bop, try to take a kill, reload the outlaw, then bop bop, or maybe bop. Then we kill another enemy, you know, enemies are taking a sight, always keep the shorty as the secondary weapon. Okay, enemies do the smoke here, here and here, I can drop down, playing the smoke with the shorty, act with the dash ability, bop bop, third kill. Then I can use the object to go back onto the rafters. At that moment of time, probably all of the enemies are already dead by your teammates. So, don't be FK, please. Spike planted. Enemy spotted A. Uh, listen, uh, I don't care that you have Outlaw in this round. I mean, on the minimap, we, s we quite literally saw that Sova is... Uh, under the bomb site, and he is alone. Like your Viper is going for a retake. Your Reyna is dropping down on the site. We still have a secondary weapon. You still you still have a ghost with yourself. Like Sova cannot kill Reyna, Viper, and you in in the same moment of time. Like the guy needs to be Demon One. To do that, especially with a Spectre. Right now, if I saw the Sova on the minimap, I, I mean, I heard the Sova fighting my, my teammates below me. Pull out the Ghost, drop down with the Dash ability, delete that idiot, pick up his gun, let's go for the retake. Let's not allow Arena and Viper to die for nothing. Viper got a kill, but you should have gotten that kill yourself. Bro, like, like your refray game and refray potential is like potato thus far. Uh, so, Viper got a kill onto that, uh, onto that Sova. None of your teammates are pushing from the right side yet. Why, why are you picking the enemies from, from left to right? If uh, your chamber is behind you doing nothing, your Viper is in the city doing nothing. Like, it was much more ro logical in this round to push onto the left side from top of the rafters so that I can support 
my Reyna that is definitely going to get in a fight with the enemies. Like, no matter what. Like, my, my highest priority in a game of Element, whenever I'm going for the retakes and I'm playing the post plans, like, uh, pushing something, playing on the attacker side, defender side, is always supporting my teammate that has the highest chances of dying and that is doing something useful for my team. Now, if I have some other win condition, like, you know, I can play just a passive post plant, I don't need to... You know, you don't need to follow every stupid play of your teammates completely. Sometimes it is better to do something completely different. But on this type of a retakes, you always want to support your most aggressive ally. I would have just peeked from the left side, fight every fight that my Reyna is fighting, wait for the Chamber and Viper to come with me, and that's it. Now here, I know that Brimstone is on the bomb site. I'm dropping down on the site. And I'm trying to pick a fight that my Viper is going to pick. I don't want to lose this refresh potential with the Viper. We know that Brimstone is on the bomb site. We need to help the Viper. You need to focus more on keeping the proper distance and closing the proper and holding the angles in a proper way, in a way that allows you to refresh your allies. I ask yourself always, like, Am I able to refray this teammate that is pushing this area of the map, that is peeking this angle, peeking that angle? If the answer is no, or you need like two or three seconds to like uh, refray that ally, you need to do something better with your positioning. Last player standing. Okay. But to be honest, like, uh, you know, just just don't AFK in the first round, you know, at the start of the round, bro, like, uh, if you just abuse these off angles on the, on the A side, like, you, you would have probably killed, like, one or two enemies with the outlaw, like, in, in this elo, player's utility usage is, like, zero, most of the time, like, uh, easy kills for you. Now, in this fourth round, to be honest, we don't really know what enemies are gonna do. But we can kind of apply the ABAB rule. So in the first round, enemies went B. In a uh, second round, enemies went B but through mid. And in a third round, enemies went A. So already based on the ABAB rule, we can actually decide to play around the mid area of the map and to play a fast rotation towards the B side. Because in this round, there is like around 80% of chances that the enemies will try to do something in this area of the map and around 20% of chances that the enemies will do something onto the A site. And especially if you're playing Jet on Icebox, like, uh, you have all of the freedom in this world to do whatever the fuck you want. Like, literally, you can, you can play any position, any bomb site. you're not bound to play anything, essentially. Okay, let's hold the mid. Playing Vandal, right? Yo, my, my dude is AFK every round, man. Every round. Every round. There. Uh, I mean, like, we need to be ready for that. Like, I I, I don't know what you're doing here. Listen. Uh, there. First of all, if you're holding mid area of the map, like, there are so many better things that you can do rather than peeking the enemies from top of the boiler. Like, like, there's no reason for you to do this. Like, first of all, we can just play this off angle, drop down position, hold the mid area of the map like this, try to burst fire an enemy, drop down, and then re-engage the enemies with a dash ability, and delete the second enemy. Third thing that we can do, if the enemies are pushing mid area always fast, we can hide, Dodge the enemy's utility, activate the dash ability, destroy that enemy. With a jet, especially, you can run all the way up to this box, hold the mid area from the window. I don't know, in, in platinum, diamond, ascendant, uh, gold, in every elo below immortal one, like, I don't know, people are just not adjusted yet to the existence of this window, and people don't expect, like, the this early peak. I don't know why. 
like uh, I, I know why people are just playing this game on a autopilot mode like uh, uh, 24-7 so let's try to do that then like uh, if you're holding the mid area of the map from boiler the worst thing you can do like uh, with the automatic weapons is holding mid area of the map static statically like what you should be doing is consistently moving up and down, up and down, up and down, like like jiggle peeking the angle basically, like going up and down, up and down, and then, you know, like uh, we engage the enemies like this. If you have the operator or outlaw, you should be holding, you know, this mid peak and trying to kill the enemies. The reason why why I don't hold this angle statically is because even my dead grandma has a good crosshair placement for this shit. You know, like, basically, it's such a common angle to be cleared that it is stupid to hold it in a static way. And you cannot lose the timing onto the enemies. Like, you cannot allow the enemies to pick this angle and then, like, you know, they're just waiting for you, like that brimstone, and they're deleting you. Gather the information, like, you know. It's like you're jump spotting the angle, basically. Like, just do this, do this. Aha, brimstone is there. Let's activate the dash ability. Bam. We have the perfect crosshair placement. We have, like, uh, Picker's Advantage. That Brimstone is out of the game. Essentially. But, because you lost the timing onto that, and because you were AFK one more time, we die in the way that we died. Okay. Just needed my bullets. You really need, like, uh, you really need to tell your, uh, if the chamber is the only sentinel that you have in your team, you need to tell the chamber to keep the trainer for the kitchen. Like, like basically, it, it is a necessity, essentially. One. And listen, as I said, like, as a jet player, you should only be holding the mid area of the map. If enemies are really abusing you there, if uh, if uh, you don't have any sense, like basically, you know, enemies are really persistent in using the mid area of the map to lurk, flank, or to push us five. But otherwise, you're just wasting your potential. Like Jet uh, has a, such a huge kill potential on A site and B site. Because of the verticality of the bomb sets and how many aggressive plays that you can do and how many like off angles you can play, it is just stupid to, you know, start your rounds holding the under the tube and holding the the kitchen. Like, tell your I don't know, like tell your chamber to play here or uh, I don't know, like uh, fade uh, Reina. Put, tell the chamber to put a trademark. Like I don't know why the fuck are we even doing this to be honest. Uh, when this, when this Viper, when your Viper got a fight with Arena, bro, I would instantly go back and try to make some kind of a crossfire with Viper. Like here, for an example. Like I would either be dropping down with a dash ability, trying to delete Arena, or I would be running back onto the window and trying to kill this Arena as well. I don't know, you, you, you missed this kill completely, like, uh, for some reason. I mean, you, usually in this silo, like, uh, players get very easily distracted, you know? And uh, I don't think that this Reyna would be ready for a fight with you in Kitchen. Plus, the Reyna was reloading a Vandal. We could have easily found some kill, like, through the Brimstone Smoke or just peeking the enemy Reyna from the window with a dash ability, like. I don't know why we pussied out and why we went for this long... Uh, Lurk and rotation. Entered. Last player standing. Uh, I shot. I shot. What the fuck? Yikes! Wow. 
but once again, like I, I really want you to focus on on uh, that one rule that I have given you. Like, uh, if there is even like five percent of chance that you're gonna fight an enemy, I mean, God forbid you also hear the enemies pushing you. Like, act with your dash ability. Also, I don't know what's happening with your sound. This is already the second time that you're not making a proper game decision in terms of your crosshair placement and in terms of your positioning based on the sound. Bro, if I hear the enemy Yikes. pushing through the oh. city like this, I can place him my crosshair for that angle. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. Them timings, my friend. Beach, baby. Okay, we can hold or this off angle. Glass cannon now. Okay, we can do it. Okay, Habibi. Because I got them sniper capabilities. <laughs> Three. Or disabilities. Fuck knows, my god. Okay, listen. Just a quick tip, I talked about this like an uh, enormous amount of times. Uh, whenever you play some kind of an elevated position, play towards some kind of a drop, towards the safety. Like this spot, we either want to start here, we want to start here, or we want to start here. Depending on what you want to do. I'm not going to hold this angle like this. So if I miss my shot, I need to do all of this to reposition. I want to start like this. So if I miss the shot, I'm instantly down. And I can reposition onto safely and faster onto some secondary position. Like, uh, but you will never see me play these elevated positions in the middle of them. It's just stupid. Where are you? Marked one. Here. Oh, they crossed. Ouch. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Pay attention on your movement. The hunt begins. Okay, there can be kitchen. There. Planted. What's this? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. This one is uh, weird as fuck uh, overall. First of all, you know, when you had this one enemy in the kitchen, like, uh, I mean. Any game decision is good, you know, like, uh, here, no matter what you decide, like, to play either with Fade or Reyna, it was a good game decision, you're 4 versus 3, we don't need, like, a map control, we can just play a retake together and that's it. So, I don't know if I would follow here Reyna or Fade, probably Fade, because enemies can also be in the city, all the way behind my chamber, because we needed to take the kitchen control and city control before the... Chamber dies in some kind of a crossfire because, as far as you know, I thought, I thought that enemies were doing some kind of a split on B or push onto B side through kitchen. Then, after Faye died, very good kill on Reyna, nothing to shit about. You don't have a dash ability. Yeah. When the Brimstone planted the spike, good game decision to clear under the tube. But to be honest, I wouldn't spend a lot of time in this area of the map because Cypher can literally be anywhere. Like, Cypher can be bottom mid. You know, anywhere, like literally, we, we, we have zero information about the cipher. Next thing, it is absolutely fine that you use the knives for this round because you have like 100 HP, and if you miss your shot, and if you miss your shot during this retake, thank you a lot for the Prime Gaming sub. I totally forgot to turn off these, these uh, notifications, man. Thank you a lot, thank you a lot. And if I miss this shot uh, with the operator, 
you know, onto the Brimstar Cypher and I'm unable to refrag. Like Raynar Chamber, we're absolutely fucked. Now, once again, when you were going for this retake, you need to focus yourself more on proper angle clearing. Like, uh, how you don't know, you know, how do you know that maybe enemy Cypher is not like, uh, I don't know, on the left side right now? Maybe he's there. I literally don't know if he's there. Maybe he was playing on a trigger discipline or he lost the timing on you and now he's gonna kill you there. Please, you know, try to play Velarant in a bit more paranoid, par paranoid way where you always pre-assume that enemies can be somewhere and enemies will be there. Like, because of this, what you're doing in the game, you're gonna, you're gonna die a lot of times by getting backstabbed by the enemies. <laughs> Okay, we know that they're both there. But, but you heard that the, the guy... I, I don't know what, like... You know what you're missing in the game? But this is something that you kind of develop through the playtime and, and there's no other way. You're missing the audio awareness in the game. Like, based on the audio... You don't know where are the enemies. I, I don't know, like... Maybe try using HRTF or, or like, uh, you know, use the HRTF, like, check if the speaker configuration is on a stereo, like, uh, I don't know how you don't hear these sounds, you know, your audio awareness is zero. Like, maybe in Aimlabs and Kovacs you can try to do some of these audio awareness tasks, like, uh, as well, but this is really just something that you build up, uh, Through the, through, 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 through the playtime. Like, th there's no other way to, to improve this uh, overall. But this is... I've never seen, like, uh, less audio awareness from some player. Like, you literally heard that... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, literally, like, three kills... Three deaths already in this match. I mean, two deaths and one potential death. Could have happened because of this audio awareness, like. Okay. Not really the best angle in the world, but we can do it. Just remember, please, like, uh, you know, if you're holding the B main area of the map. Aggressively like this. So you want to hold the B main push of the enemies. From this position alone. Like, you can hold this angle for maximum, I don't know, maximum uh, 3 seconds. 3 to 4 seconds. After 3 or 4 seconds, if you don't see the enemies there, you either need to move and clear the garage, like this, or you need to disengage. Because, you know, the, the enemy's barrier is here. 1, 2, 3, 4... Like, already after 4 seconds, I can be here. If I'm just walking through this position. Probably I'll need more time. Like, I'll need like 5 or 6 seconds if I'm, you know, jiggle-picking the angles and clearing everything one by one. But uh, this angle, we cannot hold really alone. I mean, we can hold it and... But after like 4 or 5 seconds, we need to do something else. Like, uh, either reposition towards the yellow or, you know jumps for the enemies here and then engage them with a the dash ability. We cannot keep holding this angle this long. But to be honest, like, in, 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 in this specific example, like, you have, like, two options. Like, uh, you, you can either come back and play onto the B site, and try to surprise the enemies from the B main area of the map, or you can go for the fast flank and lurk. Maybe in this scenario I will go for the fast, you know, for the fast flank and lurk, because, like, uh, usually in your ELO, like, people have a very, very bad awareness when it comes to the timings and these type of, uh, you know, flanks and lurks. 
And also, like, we, we never did that. We never did that, you know, in the previous, like, six rounds. So maybe we can surprise the enemies, try to backstab them, like, I mean, if your passive gameplay is already not working, let's try some other playstyle that might work for us. I mean, even, even, even... Bro! Mr. Shelby is angry. Ay 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 ay. Ay 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 ay. Oh, listen. Uh, if the enemy is not looking in your direction, like, uh, take your time. Like, basically, just just take your time. Like, if you're behind an enemy, wait a bit. You know, trigger discipline. The like enemy is not looking towards you. He's pushing CT. We can pick a better moment of time to kill this cypher. Maybe by baiting this cypher, we can take a kill onto the Soba, onto the cypher, and Reyna in the same time. Like, don't shoot immediately. Whenever you're behind the enemies, 90% of times, it is a good idea to wait a bit. You know, if you think that you cannot do anything with that trigger discipline and that timing that you got onto the enemies, delete the cypher, make him bold, kill him in the head. But, you know, if you hear the Soba pushing through the B main, going for the spike plant, and you're in this area of the map, wait for the Soba to plant the spike, or to start planting the spike, kill the Soba, now you have the spike control, you know that the Cypher is CT, you know that the Reyna is kitchen or CT, it's gonna be easier for you to clutch this round. Like, it's always a good idea. It's always a good idea to chill a bit. You know, when you're behind the enemies. Just for like one or two seconds, ask yourself like, uh, what should you do right now? Should you actually shoot right now? Are you ready to shoot? Are you ready to kill that enemy from behind? And then after like one or two or three seconds, make some kind of a game decision. Like, <clears throat> one of the worst mistakes of players in Valorant, another worst mistake, is you are not allowing yourself to breathe. Like, you see a target, you shoot. Like, I see a target, I instantly ask myself, do I need to kill this guy? How I wanna kill him? Is the guy looking at me? And all of these questions I answer in less than a second. So, take your, take some time for yourself. Even if you kill this cypher, because you're in the numbers disadvantage, and we have no idea what enemies are gonna do, let him. You know, let him go CT. And maybe, you know, if you if you, if you don't know what enemies are gonna do, or you think that your fate is gonna die, as the Cypher is doing this, you know, kill the Cypher. But uh, otherwise, like, you could have, like, tried to play on the trigger discipline, see if you can capitalize maybe on more kills, and that's it. For example, now, because we saw the Soba dart in the CT, and also we saw, like, uh, Reyna Lear in the kitchen, like, there is a huge chance that the enemies will end up on the B site. There was no reason to shoot at that camera as well. Like, Cypher didn't open the camera as far as I see. Maybe he did, actually. He did. Last player standing. I, I don't know, did we actually forget about the Cypher? You know. Like, uh, if, if uh, two enemies are engaging you from two different positions, like enemy Reyna is coming through the CT. You're coming through the B-Link, enemy Cypher is CT. Like, an instant game decision that you need to make is who I want to fight and how can I isolate these guys into individual one versus one duels. In this example here, in which enemy Reyna caught you, the best idea is probably to use a fast smoke dash towards the cypher, isolate the cypher in a 1v1 duel, kill the cypher, and then focus on Reyna. Or fully disengage both of them towards the B main. From the B main, try to kill the cypher before the Reyna connects with him, and then kill the Reyna. 
but staying for this long in this duel and re-engaging Reyna inside of this duel doesn't make any sense. Like, I never want to fight the two enemies that are peeking me from two completely opposite angles or holding or peeking in an area of the map in which enemies can kill me from two, three angles that I don't see within my sight. Like, I always make sure that I cannot get backstabbed by the enemies, and I always make sure that I'm not overexposed from enormous amount of these different positions and off angles. Last player standing. I don't know, very, very unnecessary death, basically. Like, like a, lo a lot of your deaths, and one of the reasons why your KST is so bad, is simply how you're holding the angles, how you're engaging the enemies. Uh, it is based on your positioning and based on, like, how close you play to your allies. Like, I really feel that the main solution to your problem on a defender side of Icebooks is just following all of the tips from my ranked playbook on Discord, following all of the tips from the exclusive coaching videos, and we need to make some kind of a custom server training for you that you can follow to basically practice better positioning and, you know, like, uh, to just understand a bit better, like, what you should do on a specific map. Like, which angles you should hold, how should you hold them, and stuff like that. Like, maybe after this world review, I'm gonna share some kind of a training with you. So, like, uh, uh, we need to work on that. Like, there are so many different ways how we can fix this problem, but... This, like, the deaths that you have are primarily, like, it's not really a mechanical deaths. It's just your movement, positioning, and how you actually play the map. Now, let me just uh, say one thing. Uh, is it okay? Sorry guys, I have a coaching session right now, and I'll need to cancel it for you guys. I'll find you. It's not actually a coaching session, it's like a... <sighs> we are Platinum 2. Like, we are Platinum 2, and that's why, that, that's why I'm stressing myself out, and that's why I'm reacting like this. Like, you cannot tell me that as a Platinum 2 player that is watching, me, watching my videos and, you know, watching high elo gameplay, that it is logical for you that the enemy is always using a dart and you're not telling your teammates to destroy that dart. And you're still committing to this push after you see a dart. Like basically, first thing that I would always do if I'm playing jet and I want to play jet in an aggressive way towards the A main area of the map, hey Reyna, hey Chamber, you're just jerking your cocks on the A side, can you please destroy the Sova dart from this position? Thank you very much. Okay, they don't want to destroy that dart. No problem. Absolutely no problem. If I want to go for some aggressive play, we can just, you know, use fast the ropes. We can drop here, use a smoke where we think the Sova is going to dart. Then, from, the, from this position, go for a kill, go for a kill. Or maybe at the start of the round, we can just glide here, use a smoke up there, and then from this position, try to kill the enemies. Or... We can just, you know, at the start of the round, use the smoke up there, use the updraft, get onto this position, activate the dash ability before you updraft, try to get a kill. But, map, your, your awareness in the game is so poor. Maybe it's because of the playtime. I mean, to be honest, you didn't play that much Valorant and God knows how many games on, on Icebooks you have played. Because you started in episode 6, act 3, 1, I, I already forgot, like, to be honest. Uh, and you don't have that much playtime. But, uh, you know, a lot of these problems that you have, they just get fixed as you're improving your game knowledge. As you're playing the game. And uh, by just simply following the playbook that I made on Discord for Jet. Like, in the next, like, 100 hours, you will become God on this. And I'm not God, but you will get on a level of, I don't know. Diamond Ascendant, uh, maybe Immortal players, like, uh, 
like you're making these mistakes that uh, are more mistakes of a silver, bronze, and iron player rather than a platinum player. Now, may I ask one question? Like, uh, you hear the enemy is pushing A site. Two of your teammates are playing mental gymnastics instead of this position. Like, two of your teammates are like uh, having uh, E sex in this position, waiting to die. Your game decision is I picked the, uh, you know, I got revealed by the enemies, I'm gonna rotate mid. Even though I hear two enemies pushing A set at this moment of time. In an eco held by round. So right now you're willing to lose the life of your chamber, fade, in this eco held by round. Just to put, maybe get a kill on mid. Where you don't know if the enemies are there or not. Rhetorical question, basically. Like, 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 how does that seem like a good game decision for you? Basically. You always prioritize the fights. The first fights that you think your teammates are gonna fight. So right now, I don't know if my Viper will, will fight anyone on mid or B site. I don't know if enemies are kitchen because we don't have information there. But what I know, what, what I know 100% is that one or two enemies are definitely in the aim main. Let's try to deal with them first. Pray to God that our Viper and Reyna are not gonna be Paralympic players. And then we make another game decision. But making this type of a blind game decision to rotate on mid and praying to God that your Cypher, that your Chamber and Fade that are basically handless in this game are gonna survive the push of these one or two enemies on A. That's that's such a huge gamble. On my mark. I don't know. I I really feel that uh, that in this round, we could have easily killed that Sova. That was droning from from pipes. Take his gun. Maybe kill the enemy jet that has the operator, and then then deal with the enemies that are in the kitchen and tube. And also, like as I said, uh, you know, if you notice, like two or three rounds in a row, that enemies love to abuse the tube, to abuse the kitchen. You need to play mid area of the map yourself and just play a fast rotation between A side and B side. Like it, you cannot lose on this map the information on mid, tube, and in the kitchen. As soon as you lose that information. The round becomes 20 times harder on Icebox. Like, and, or, or at the end of the day, you know, in a, in a game of Valorant, on a defender side, you don't need to have like some booster level strategies, communication, eye dealing skills. Like, all I'm asking from you guys is to micromanage your controllers. Like, that is why you need to know what is a good, bad, or optimal smoke. Micromanage your sentinels. If they are doing some stupid piece of utility, that might cost you the round, and that's it. And if you really have some kind of a plan, you know, you want to push something, you need a help or support from your teammates, then you need to talk with your teammates. Otherwise, you can just, you know, be silent and just adapt to your allies 24-7 and adapt to the enemies. But not having a trip in the kitchen is like... Bro, like, it, it's such a gamble, such as, like, we're losing so much information on the map, and that's why this is happening. Very good kill. So much for recon. Also, one more thing that I've noticed is that you're st staying way too much in these crossfire positions where enemies can easily kill you from multiple different angles. Like, for example, here. If I got this kill on Reyna. Fuck it, bro. I don't know where's the rest of the enemies. I know that some enemies are aiming, some enemies are on B side. Maybe one more enemy is in the tube, only God, know. God knows. But let's smoke ourselves out, peek the window in the kitchen, take the gun of the Reyna, then take another safe position, maybe updraft in the kitchen, take the full kitchen control, and always isolate the angles one by one. Like, your highest priority in a game of Valorant 
is always safety over anything else. You want, we want to reduce the factor of timings and factor of luck. So we want to be overexposed from the least amount of angles possible at every single moment of time. So we are fighting the enemies with proper movement, proper crosshair placement, and without a need to be, I don't know, Demon 3, essentially. Because in order for you to kill this enemy that is behind you, but you need to do some kind of a crazy 180 degree flick. Like, for example, you know, if I'm retaking, I don't know, if I'm retaking uh, B site of uh, Icebox, and I'm going through the, you know, bottom tube, I kill one enemy here, how do we path through this position? If, if I don't want to use abilities, I kill the Reyna, I do this, I do this, so I'm hugging this wall. Why that wall? So I'm not exposed, and I'm not giving the anal cavity to the enemies behind me. Then, I'm checking the kitchen, walking like this, maybe using a smoke to pick up the gun from the dead enemy, and maybe waiting for my teammates to play a retake or regaining the kitchen control. Like, you're not gonna find me in this area of the map, where bap, 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 bap. Five, six different angles from which enemies can kill me. I mean, three. Three like bad things. Here, like, uh, the main mistake that you're making with a jet is definitely, you know, that thing that you said, like, uh, I'm, I'm gonna disregard what type of a fight you took with the enemies. I'm gonna disregard that you crouched this fast into fight and your mechanical skill only because the dash ability is not activated. Like, basically, you heard this cipher. You knew that you're gonna engage this cipher right now on the bomb site in some kind of a fight. You heard the enemies on the on the B site pushing through the B main area of the map. Like, please, from now on, uh, before you develop a good timing and good feeling for when to actually use the dash ability, if there is even a five percent of chance for you to fight an enemy, activate it. Have it with yourself because here in this fight, listen. So, you heard, you heard the Cypher there. Activate the dash ability. Okay. My crosshair placement is fucked. I crouched in a fight. I missed my first three shots. Bam! I'm out on the right side. Repositioning myself. And getting ready to re-engage this Cypher. With a proper crosshair placement. And Peeker's advantage for the second fight. Instead of committing to this fight like an imbecile. And dying... In the most pointless way possible. Last player okay, I mean, like with Jet, you can play glass cannon operator whenever you want. It's it's fine. This angle here, I will never hold with operator in my life. So essentially, whenever you're holding angles in Valorant, you always want to focus on one thing. Simplifying the angles as much as possible. So I want to avoid dry peeking or holding the enemies on the positions where they can engage me from multiple different vertical and horizontal positions and they can have an easy crosshair placement for me. This is one of these positions. So basically, if I'm holding, I don't know, the tube with the operator, I'm gonna hold it a bit more aggressively. I'm probably gonna do, you know, this, and then I'm gonna hold that. Or, I'm gonna hold it like this, because even if you miss a shot, you can easily jump back and reposition. Or, I can hold it a bit more passively. Like this. If I have the info about the, you know, the... the the under tube push. Also, you can easily play some kind of an off angle. Like this, take a kill. Like, everything is better in this scenario, except doing this. Why don't I hold this? First of all, it's more of a headshot angle. Like, you need to be mega precise to kill the enemies there. Enemies can pick you from enormous amount of different 
horizontal uh, positions at that moment of time. Like they can pick us from there, from here, from here. You need to the you need to do a lot of the flicks and micro corrections. If I pick you from this spot, I'm always picking this angle like that. You know, like this. Like I'm always pre-aiming the position that you're holding at that moment of time. So I'm have the picker's advantage, better cross replacement than you. You are in a disadvantage. The only advantage you have is that you have the operator, so if I miss. If I miss, like, the shot onto you, you're probably gonna kill me, essentially. Uh, but there's so many better ways how you can hold the tube area of the map, and generally speaking, you know, in this tube area of the map, what I'm trying to do is, like, uh, I'm trying to catch the enemies off guard when they're pressing the W key through the tube, you know. They're already somewhere here, and I'm gonna pick them like this, get away with a kill, abuse another off angle, bam, get a kill, reposition somewhere else. This is a really hard shot to kill, and you're way too overexposed, and such an easy target for the enemies. And listen, if you have nobody, nobody like holding the the tube under the tube boiler, uh, and you don't have any sentinel utility holding the enemies push, you need to hold the mid area of the map either more aggressively, you know, peeking through the window, peeking through the tube, under the tube, and doing that type of shit, or you just need to play boiler. Like, because from the boiler we see inside of the tube, we see the bottom mid, like, uh, and if the enemies are not smoking the cross, which enemies are, in this example, not doing, they did it only one round, you know, we can potentially get away with a kill. But I really feel that in this game, like, uh, it would have been much better if you just communicated to your chamber, like, chamber brother, give me a train, you know, give me a trip for the tube, for the kitchen, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, Viper, you know, just hold uh, B-Link and B-Main area of the map, that's it. And let's focus on, on destroying the enemies in the A-Main area of the map, B-Main area of the map, and that's it, like. Spike down A. Not ready. Oof. Okay. Some... Another... You know, thing that Valorant players are not doing enough, compared to Counter-Strike players, is saving the weapons. Like... Uh, 100 HP. 2 versus 4. Operator in the hands. Enemies have the Sova Ultimate, Sova Arrows, uh, Brimstone Molotov. You need to be... Like, you have a, below 5% of chances to win this round. I would probably just go for the save. Like, let's just focus on the next round, and that's it. We are already losing 2-7. Like, if I lose the, this weapon, I'm probably gonna lose the next round as well. Like, uh, there are just some rounds that are almost unwinnable. Some rounds that it's not worth even trying to win them. Like, what I would try in this round is probably the following. I'll probably play from the CT, you know, try to hold this peak and this peak, you know, this peak and this peak. If the jet peaks me, or one of the enemies peaks me, and I make out of this two versus four, a two versus three scenario, okay, I'm maybe gonna go for the retake. If the enemy just planted the spike, if my fade maybe gets some kind of a backstab kill, and we are two versus two, of course, like, fuck it, I'm, I'm running it down, taking the gun from the dead enemies, and that's it. But if the enemies don't make any aggressive mistake, you know, they don't they, they don't overpeak you, and fate doesn't capitalize on anyone from behind, fuck it. Like, just save the weapon, focus on the next round. Uh, in headshot angles, Operator Marshall basically the same, but... Depending on what type of cash angle you're holding, like, uh, you know, uh, at that moment of time. Now, best chamber map, in your opinion, uh, Breeze and, uh, Breeze and uh, Icebox. Definitely. Your real... Eh! Now that we got this skill, now I'm gonna risk it, obviously. But Viper needs to do something. What the fuck is Viper doing, bro? 
Ah, no way Viper is coming back, bro. Spike planted. I mean, she has the ultimate, so... Yeah. Okay. Reyna is definitely gonna be close CT now. Let's speak with the Viper. I don't know. You know, when I have the Operator... Probably I wouldn't go... In, in a 2 versus 3 scenario. I wouldn't go Rafters at this moment of time. I would just play with my Viper, try to kill this Reyna. I mean... You literally know, based on the sound and enemy's utility usage, where are the enemies. And you're not trying to play with your teammates on a refill potential, trying to punish the enemies. Like, you always... You pretend like... You know, enemies don't exist. Like, like you pretend that, that enemies are not there. Based on your positioning and your crosshair placement, like... I mean, I'm not gonna talk about this problem, we covered it. How? Like, like, tell me how. Last player standing. Save, save, save. Like, let's just save, bro. Save. Bro. Like, what, what are we doing, man? No time for that. I don't know. You, you need to get better with the audio awareness, but there's no fix for that. I, there, there's no training you can do. Game, you know, just play the game. In aimlabs, maybe you can do like a uh, spatial awareness and Kovax as well, training, and that's it. But uh, I don't know. Maybe headset is the problem. I don't know what type of headset you have and headphones. Maybe your configuration, like uh, in the sound, is bad because you're really bad at distincting whether or not the sound sound is like you know where 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 is the sound coming from. There's some kind of a problem, and I don't know how to help you. You know, like with that. Okay, this is fine. Ah, this, this, like, this is not fine. Listen, whenever you're like, uh, you want to pick the enemies from the window, and you take, you want to take the tube area of the map. Start the round by running here and then walking, because otherwise you're gonna miss this enemy. You're gonna miss this enemy going from this position to that position. Like, you need to take the window control, running, and then walking, and then peeking this angle. And usually I go, f you know, I double check it, like, just in case that I didn't miss an enemy. Like, I do this, and then I focus on holding the window. Like, you cannot, first of all, you were two seconds late to start walking towards the window. Second of all, you walked all the way here to there. One. Of course, you're gonna miss that uh, timing on that enemy. Well, look at the barriers, so... An enemy barrier is here. Like, this is the enemy's barrier. Enemies can run all the way from this position to this position. They're faster than you. Is this recording a normal stream? Normal stream, bro, like, I'm just, like, doing a body review. They can do this, you're not gonna see them. Are you using raw input buffer on? I'm, I don't know, like, depends. Sometimes, like, uh, raw, raw input buffer, like, uh, fucks up, uh, like, makes makes my game micro stutter for some reason. And I don't know what is the problem. And that's why sometimes I turn it off after some updates and patches, but generally I keep that option on. Is it possible to rank up to Immortal from Platinum without committing hours to this game? Aim, training, watering, and playing comp all in one day. But maybe just doing something small to improve daily. I just have a full-time job and other things in life. I really want to improve... Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, bro. Like, like, uh, uh especially with coaching and stuff like that, like, uh, your, your improvement and pro pro progress is gonna be much faster. Like, for example, uh... I've coached some 45 year old players that went like from bronze to immortal one uh, in around like five to six months and they play like one or two matches of Valorant per day. I, I, you know, you don't need to play a crazy amount of games. The training doesn't need to last like for two hours. If you just have time to invest like, I don't know, one and a half or two hours per day for Valorant, I think anyone in this game can be immortal three.
in less than a year. Anyone with proper guidance and, you know, with proper training and proper mindset to actually play the game. Uh, because, I, I, I don't know, re reaching Immortal 3 in this game is just really like, I mean, it's like re reaching, I don't know, global elite in, 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 in Counter-Strike. And reaching Radiant is like reaching Face It level 10, maybe, you know. Okay, we can go for the flank and lurk now. Fuck, man! You really need to chill a bit, man. Like, like listen, if you already have some, some kind of a good timing like this onto the enemies, wait a bit. You don't need to shoot immediately. Like, this whole match, enemies will be playing some kind of a default, you know, pressuring your mid, pressuring your A set on B set, like... Wait to see what's gonna happen. You know, this push through the B main area of the map was a good game decision because passive gameplay was not working. Let's try to do something proactive with, with, with the Viper. Viper died. Okay, let's stay silent. Let's keep our location a secret. Leather Jet passes. You know? And then, like, you know, let's try to capitalize not on one kill, but maybe on like two, three, four kills. Spike down B. Yes, you got a spike, but. Ugh. You know. Four enemies are gonna come in your face right now and destroy you. Prepare for hellfire. Spike down B. Like just 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 allow yourself, like if the enemies are already not looking at you, like allow yourself to have like at least two seconds where you ask yourself, should I kill this enemy? Like can I capitalize? on something, on some kind of a timing, or, or more kills, if I don't kill this enemy, at this moment of time. I mean, you know, if... Especially if the spike is going towards the site, your team has already died on mid and then, you know, in the B mid. Like, probably here we could have gotten a kill on, maybe like, Reyna, plus maybe one more enemy, and then like, instead of playing a... 3v4 scenario, we're playing a 3v3 scenario and we have higher chances of winning this this round. Spike down B. I don't know, like the problem with this vote review is like uh, I already know how to fix your problems. I have one very very fucking good like uh, uh, training example for you. And I cannot share that training example publicly because it's not going to be fair towards the people that actually buy my coaching. And uh, after this full review, I'm just going to share with you like uh, one routine that I want you to do until like for the next like maybe three months in total. But uh, it, 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 it includes like uh, aim training, it includes like uh, training for overall game awareness. Training for all of these movement and positioning and discipline problems that you have, like, literally, I, you know, I'll, I already have a solution for you. But that solution I cannot share publicly. At least not yet, like, in the future I'm going to be sharing, like, uh, a lot of my routines, but Get out of my right way. now I cannot do it. At least you got us, you know, you're going to get the fix. <laughs> Chat is not going to get the fix, man. Chat gets scammed here, bro. Listen, in, in, in this type of games where your teammates are getting picked apart one by one and uh, basically like uh, uh, enemies are playing default a lot or enemies are unpredictable and you don't know where the enemies are gonna go there are two solutions to do. Solution number one play more aggressively take more space from the enemies with your teammates. You know, if you're starting your round on A take the aim and control fully try to backstep the enemies. Start your round on B Take the B-man area of the map fully, try to backstab the enemies, and that's it. Solution number two, try to predict who's 
dying the most in your team and not predicted but just based on the information that you have ask yourself like who is dying the most in your team like uh, uh and where do your teammates have the highest chances to die first and uh, based on that make a decision with who you want to play in that round but playing passively in these type of matches where enemies are just decimating your teammates left and right is the worst thing you can do like, it's impossible like you're just losing the numbers left and right uh, all four of your teammates are mega bad, to be honest. And with this type of teammates on the defender side, you need to be a bit more proactive. Like, uh, take more space, push the enemies more, risk it more, take more solo fights, 50-50 gunfights, and that's it. Like, you need to go more for the risky plays in this type of matches. Like, uh, enemies, the whole game... Played more of a default game, you know, like 1-2 enemies mid, 1-2 enemies A, 1-2 enemies B, and splitting the map across. Like, if your teammates cannot contest the enemies anywhere, you cannot play passively. Out of my way. I got excited for a second, thought it was the dick size. Average, average charlatan phantom. <laughs> Now, I just want to uh, talk about this here. Uh, is it a good idea that you decided to rot... Like, to be honest, in this example here, there is no right choice. Like, this is a 50-50 gamble always. Like, uh, if my Viper didn't use the ultimate on the A site, I would always rotate towards my teammates on bomb site and help them while two of my teammates are going for the fast lurk and flank. I, I would never play with uh, these two guys here. But the problem here is like, my Viper did the ultimate. There is a huge chance that she's gonna delay the enemy's push. Maybe make the enemies rotate back. So this is a complete 50-50 gamble with who you wanna play. You wanna play with Viper or Feed or with a Chamber and Reyna. And there is no wrong decision, to be honest. Especially when your teammates are so bad. <laughs> You, you need to start, like, uh, following the rule for the dash ability that I've recommended you. Spike planted. Be faster. Watch this! Like, like, you, you, I don't know. Like, uh, I already know what to do with you. I, I really don't. Uh, I don't have the strength to speak about these things over and over again. You'll, you'll get all of the solutions privately for, uh, for a defender side, and what you need to do better with the jet. Let's focus on the attacker side. Sorry, guys. Just today, I'm, I'm a bit tired, and, and, and uh, especially because I already have a solution for this guy. It's just. Uh, I cannot share with you the, some of the stuff and, you know, you need to understand. Sometimes I'm not at 100% for, for these type of things. Now, on the attacker side of Facebooks, I've already explained in the videos that I've shared with you what you should do in the first round, second round, third round. Just for the chat, uh, ASAT is your default site. And basically your number one focus, you know, B set is your secondary focus and uh, secondary bomb site, and uh, mid area of the map is your third focus. So generally speaking, in the first round, the best idea is to push AS5. Uh, and when the enemies are like, you know, if you win the first round, in a second round, always go A. If you lose the first round, second round, always go B or try to do some kind of a split through mid and pressure the enemies on 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 mid and in the B main area of the map. Uh, now, uh, in the first round with Jet, you have like 
enormous amount of options. Like, you can just buy a Sheriff, you know, Sheriff. And with a Sheriff, you can just go for an instant peek through the belt. Clear this angle, that angle, with this type of a cross replacement. Check all of these positions and just get on top of the 410 generator for your teammates together with them. I mean, you don't need to use the dash immediately, like just, uh, you know, get on top of the 410 generator together with your allies and that's it. Second option, same shit, just buy the ghost and a smoke, you know, activate dash ability here, pick the enemies in a long range duels, try to delete one enemy with the proper cross replacement and dash ability, that's it. Third option, classic light shield, two smokes, drop down here, from this position, clear this angle, this angle, that angle, that angle, get up on top of the pipes, as your teammates are moving in, activate the dash ability, fight with the dash ability, get on top of the 4th end generator, use the generator as a cover, and then like we can also do something like this, to additionally pressure the enemies and reveal them. And then, you know, we can drop behind the green box, fight the enemies together with our teammates, and that's it. Same as I've explained in the Omen VOD review on icebooks, icebooks, on icebooks, like, uh, uh, you want to abuse as much as possible the verticality of the map. Like, there's so many different places that you can do, like, uh, so many different ways how you can take the space and support your allies. If you're moving vertically uh, onto this, on this ace, on, the, on this bomb site. This is one of the reasons why I said that you should never, like, uh, pressure the enemies uh, uh, through the ailing carry of the map, right here. Like, avoid this position. There's no fucking reason for you to go through this spot. Like, the only time when you should go through this position is if you want to punish the enemies that are playing there, there, or pushing you here. The enemies are like 24-7. Enemy jet is playing that off angle there. By the outlaw, by the operator, by I don't know, Bendel. Delete that idiot with a proper cross replacement peaker's advantage, and that's it. Otherwise, there's no reason to push this area of the map, risk getting damaged, risk getting killed, uh, and that type of shit. Like just push through here, drop down, and that's it. <laughs> oh, 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 what the fuck, man! Listen. Like, the two most important angles that you need to check when you're on the attacker side of Icebox is this position and this position. Like, like you, you need to check them. Like, the prison and top of the... top of the nest. Like, uh, if you're pushing through lower ground. Always. But always, you know. We want to jump spot the enemies here, or just clear them with a proper cross replacement. Then, we want to get up here, check the nest, and then we're moving forward with our allies. Like, or if we're pushing through the belt, we want to check the prison first. We can maybe jump spot the enemies down there. And then when we clear this, you know, just quickly check this. Like, ask your teammates, is anyone nest, guys? You know, like, be aware of what your teammates are clearing and what they are not. But not clearing the nest, bro, come on. Like, what the fuck is this death? Yo, Bruno, we'll see, man. There's two enemies in the nest. What the hell, man? What the hell? Dash ability, bro. Dash, dash ability is your bread and butter with Jet, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, uh, you know, you're pushing into the bomb site, getting on top of the 410 generator. You have the dash ability to pre-activate this shit, man. This here was completely unnecessary. Just as a reminder, the A site of Icebox is split in the sectors. One more time, I don't know how many times I'm gonna repeat this, to be honest, but as many times as I need, and as many times that you need to learn. So, A site of Icebox, we have the sector numero uno, sector numero dos, sorry, I fucked up, sector numero dos, and sector numero tres. Now, your teammates are moving from here to here. You want to go above them and to support them from the 410 generator. Your teammates are moving from here to here. 
you want to be either here, here, or do some kind of an execute that you did right now. Done. I don't want to be here, and all of my teammates are here, for an example. I want to be on that position, as my teammates are peeking the enemies at the backside, and they're able to refrag me and fight with me. One of the main problems of jet players that I'm coaching is that, like, uh, you're always executing the bomb sites, and uh, you're, like, pressuring the enemies at the moments of time when your teammates are not able to help you at all. Like, I always make sure that uh, my teammates are able to refrag me at every moment of time, and I'm able to fight together with my teammates. Otherwise, I'm not gonna execute the site, I'm gonna wait for a better timing. Like, timing is crucial when you're trying to master the jet. One enemy remaining. <laughs> One enemy remaining. I mean, based on this word, I didn't catch any consistent mechanical problem that you have. In some of the gunfights, you're rushing your shots out. Uh, discipline is really low. In some of the gunfights, you crouch. In some of the gunfights, you do this. Like in every gunfight you do that, you lose. You do some completely opposite mistake, like uh, from the previous gunfight. So you don't have any consistent problems in your fights, you're kind of consistently doing all of the bad stuff, like, uh, in your in, in, in your gunfights. Like, some of the gunfights are obviously very fucking good. You know, very precise, and you're just... You need to follow some, you know, general aim training routine for, like, like two or three months that I'm gonna share with you. And then, like, after two or three months, we're gonna see, like, uh, if I can recommend you something specific for your mechanical skill. I'll find you. And remember, in the post plants, always follow up your most aggressive teammates that have the highest chances of dying. Like right now, instead of going on top of the screens, you should be going CT, helping your Viper, helping your Fade, you know. All of that good stuff. Now, you win the first round. You win the first round. In the second round, Life shield or outlaw or heavy shield and bulldog especially listen like second round after you win the first round is always a full buy i don't care if you saved sheriff if you saved ghost if you saved jesus christ you didn't win the first round just to lose the second round never like, you, you didn't win the first round, so that you're in a disadvantage in a second round. Third round is a bonus round. A second round is always a full buy. Anti-eco. So, on Icebox, we win the first round. What do we buy on the attacker side? We can go with a Lysha and Outlaw again. Anyways, we should be pushing the A side, and from the belt, maybe we can isolate some long-range duels and easily fuck up the enemies. Lysha, Outlaw, Shorty, Utility, that's it. Now, uh, Bulldog and Heavy Shield. Bulldog is a really good map, uh, really good uh, health by weapon on the attacker side of Icebox because it allows you to play every single gunfight, you know, to some degree. Like, uh, long range gunfights, burst fire is really overpowered, you know, if you manage to control the burst fire. Uh, close range gunfights, not really the best weapon, but at least you're able to play uh, close range gunfights. But I would never. You know, like, uh, on go with a ghost and, and light shield. Heavy and martial. On the attacker side, I, I would never buy that, to be honest. Like, especially now that the outlaw exists. Like, to be honest, I completely stopped using martial after the outlaw came in the game. Outlaw is such a good weapon, to be honest. Like, uh, if you save it for the bonus round, for the third round, bro, like, uh, you're almost guaranteed at least one kill. Like, literally, it's such a good weapon. Especially if the enemies fuck up their economy a bit, and they somehow ha they somehow have the light shields in a third round as well. Done. Cool.
cool. Let's go. Uh, pup, 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 pup. Sorry guys, uh, Valorant servers uh, cannot operate for a long period of time. You know you can't keep up. My ult's ready. 30 seconds left. I hate to say it, but probably best to play as a team. So, uh, what's the plan? 30 seconds left. Hum amps, let's go. What's this? Okay, which gun to fix it? In the game servers. <laughs> Surprisingly, a very good way to clear the B main area of the map and a solid jump spot. I don't see this from immortal players that I'm coaching. But generally speaking, I think a bit better idea if you're taking the B main area of the map. Like, very rarely I push through this position, to be honest. There's no reason to. Only if enemies are very repetitive with their positions. And I want to kill one enemy there, maybe with a dash ability, an operator or outlaw or something, I don't know. Uh, or I have the ultimate and I want to do maybe something, you know, like this basically and try to, you know, engage the enemies like that. But, uh, you know, most of the times you just want to do this. Clear this angle, this angle, do this, you know, check this position, check below yourself, check that angle, check this angle move forward well okay solid oh actually he's playing bulldog but how he doesn't have a what okay. ah you bought the utility listen 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 here listen here so in a in the anti-eco rounds you always prioritize the shields and guns over your utility you're only buying the most necessary utility that you need for that specific round so here, if I want to buy the Bulldog, I'm buying the Bulldog, Heavy Shield, Smoke, and that's it. And Updrift. I don't need anything else. That's it. Actually, you don't have money for all of that. Like, Bulldog, Heavy Shield, and Smoke. I don't need anything to win this round. All I need is the Gun Advantage, Health Points, to tank the enemies, and a Refract Potential. Done. Always prioritize heavy shield over the utility for this, you know, antique rounds. Ooh, bro. I mean, yes, the, the fade reveal was coming in, but we didn't check anything, man. Like, this was terrible, bro. Take your time. Follow the example from the ranked playbook and how I showcase you right now to clear the, you know, B main area of the map. We need to clear this, clear this, clear this corridor, this box, this, this. Then we need to clear the back of the yellow, this position, and then we move into the bomb site. Like, this was... My brother just went in the air and he was like, okay. Shoot at me, you know, like, he... I love the confidence, though. Is this uh, maybe the the best VCT Viper wall in existence? <laughs> Look at the minimap. <laughs> oh, no way, bro. Like, no way. Listen, first of all, you know. The, 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 this can happen to anyone, to be honest. Like, you know. Uh, you get better with the jet executes as you practice them in a... In a custom server and stuff like that. Uh, second of all, uh, if uh, if you don't have proper smokes for the city and for this position, your smoker is dead or the viper wall is down. Uh, never, but never path into the B site like this, especially not alone. Like wait for enemies maybe to make some kind of a mistake. Wait for like. Uh, uh, enemies to maybe do some kind of a stupid peek and then when the viper wall refreshes or your teammates can give you a smoke then go in or when your teammates are pushing in but without a smoke for this trial and position 
it's it's not worth it like uh, pushing alone you're exposed to so many different angles you know ct backside uh, nest uh, tower you know kitchen here this angle like you need to be a demon one to kill enemies on all of these spots like uh, it is better for, especially if you don't have a, if you don't have a dash ability if you have a dash ability you can do whatever the fuck you want you know as long as you pick an incremental fight with the enemies that lasts like one second and you just reposition yourself but doing what you're doing right now is terrible man like uh, it's way too dangerous no no reason to do this chill a bit you know trust me like uh, the more time you give to the enemies to make some kind of a mistake, they're gonna make it. Especially in this silo, like, just hold the angle, like, wait for the jet to peek back or someone to peek something, like, pop, 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 pop. Kill two enemies, get the dash ability again, go into the side, that's it. And I love it, like, uh, when his teammates are moving into the side, he's not moving with them, he went back, like... <laughs> Good, 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 good. Good usage of the Bulldog. I don't understand what the fuck was this smoke that you wanted to do. Why, why are you even picking the enemies right now? You know, like, uh, if I have 19 HP... If I have 19 HP, and like... Uh, I'm 4 versus 2. Why do I need to pick an immediate fight with the enemies? You know, wait a bit. Like, your fate is already holding the angle. That you wanna pick. So your fade is here. Wait for the fade to take a fight with an enemy. Activate the dash ability. And then with a the proper cross replacement and, and peaker's advantage, let's delete the jet. I mean, when I'm at low HP, one thing that I really avoid, one thing that I will always avoid, is holding angles, uh, common angles, and angles in a common way. Like, I need to fight enemies with some kind of an advantage. Whether it is a peaker's advantage, uh, angle perception advantage, raw angle advantage, it doesn't matter. But I need to fight with some kind of an advantage. Either with my utility, together with my teammates, or my teammates' contact, like, uh, if I have a numbers advantage, like, I, I, I cannot just hold this and expect to survive. Like, that enemy needs to poof, spit on me, and I'm dead. It doesn't make any sense. This death is also... Unnecessary and stupid. And also, like, uh, really try to, you know, like, just a second, I need to turn off my camera for a second. Really try when you're playing this, uh... Sorry, guys. When you're playing this, like, uh, uh, un uh, antico rounds, in a second round, try your best to, like, uh, survive that round with that bonus gun like we really want to build up the good economy for ourselves for our team uh and in a third round i want to have a bonus weapon you know i want to have the outlaw i want to have the bulldog so in this scenario if i'm left like like with uh, let's say you know i'm left with a 19 hp i'll primarily try to pick the enemies onto my contact onto onto their uh, onto my teammates contact I'm not gonna risk anymore. I mean, you, you've done your job. You killed two enemies, your teammates are plenty in the spike. We don't need to risk anymore. And I really wanna save this weapon so that I have higher chances of winning the next round as well. Like when I'm playing this second Antico round, yes, my main fo I'm, I'm gonna do anything, everything that I need to do to win this round. If I need to, you know, call a nuclear weapon onto the end, I'll, I'll do whatever the hell my teammates need from me to win this Antico round. But if I already make a numbers advantage, we're planting the spike. The round is already won to some degree. I'm not going to take any additional risk. Like, your, your job is just to open the site, make the numbers advantage, just play a passive post plant in a, on a proper refresh potential, and that's it. No reason to sell this bulldog. And then now in a bonus round, we have a, I don't know, ghost sheriff or some shit like that. Your shelter, how many t-shirts like that do you have? And where do you buy them? Looks comfy. I have like uh, 10 of these t-shirts uh, and I bought them on, on AliExpress like you can find them uh, maybe on Discord I can, I can find you a link, a link and you can buy them they're really fucking comfortable like and, and, and 
to be honest, the best shirts I, I ever used. I mean, they, they, some of them look like I'm a, I'm a homeless person, which I'm gonna definitely become in a few years, but uh, from playing Valorant, but uh, they're really fucking nice. You know, they, they, I'm, I'm not sweating at all, like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, sorry guys, like, uh, I, I uh, threw my mouse onto the... onto my... keyboard. I'll take everything from them. We can see it right now. I know, I know. I'm, 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 I'm chilling a bit. I'm snorting liquid cocaine. <laughs> I'm kidding you, YouTube and Twitch. Listen, I don't know what we are saving the credit. You know these here. We have four thousand credits. What are we buying in this bonus round? We're probably buying a light shield. Buying a. Maybe Sheriff and some utility. Maybe we can also buy a light shield with, I don't know, Guardian. Maybe we can buy light shield with a Stinger and a smoke and go into the enemy's face on B set or A set or mid. But uh, what I'm definitely not buying is a fucking ghost and saving. Like, 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 what? Ah, you, 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 you actually, you know, this guy actually dropped you the ghost. I don't know, man, like, in this bonus round, I would definitely afford something better. It's not a lost round. You know, you didn't lose this round. If we can still win this round, we can go for the one taps. Especially the maps such as Icebox and Breeze. Bro, now Icebox and Breeze, like, uh, Sheriff, Marshall, and Outlaw are goated weapons. You can always be good for one pick and, you know, delete one enemy. Homeless swag, shopping on AliExpress. I was trying to find these shirts uh, somewhere else, you know, but no one is making this type of shirts. Do you know any any company that makes, you know, this type of sporty hoodie shirts? Like I don't know, but I don't want something basic. I'm not the basic bitch, man. Not wearing Yeezys like Kenny West, man. Okay, that's good. Ooh, we got information that one is in the nest. Never mind. Okay, that guy is dead actually. Listen, man, like, uh, I don't care which weapon you have, unless you have, like, a close range weapon. But your primary pathing with a jet, when you're pushing onto the A site, is always to get on the top of the 4th end generator. I, I want to see you up there. I don't want to see you in this smoke, dying from charlatan with the judge. I don't want to see you going from the lower ground with all five of your teammates, dying from the molotovs, dying from the, I don't know, Jesus Christ coming in your face. Like, I want to see, okay, if you have a ghost, let's say you have a sheriff, clear these angles methodically, one by one, one by one, that angle, this angle, this angle, that off angle, that off angle, that off angle, whatever, one by one, wait for your teammates to start pushing in. Activate the dash ability, use a smoke here as a cover, get up here, take the, this cover from the CT and screens, crouch down, bop, 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 bop. We can use our dash ability if you're in some kind of a shit, beep. If you are not in some kind of a shit, maybe we can additionally aggress the enemies and do this. And then from this tower position, and with this smoke, we can isolate the enemies there, then focus on the enemies at the backside, bop, bop. We don't need to do that, obviously. We can just chill here, wait for our teammates, and then bop, 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 fight with our teammates. Clear that angle, this angle, then move in, kill that guy. But, but, what the fuck is this? Did your cam die? Uh, my camera needs to recharge, like, just a second. I have, I... Uh, okay. What you did here is only fine because you're playing a ghost and this, ki this kill on Reyna was maybe the only kill that you're gonna take in this round. Like, generally speaking, when I'm coaching players, I always tell the players when you're playing a bonus round, eco round, 
how by rounds, and the rounds where you're in some kind of fun economy, or numbers disadvantage, you can act as a kamikaze. The first opportunity you see to trade yourself for maybe like one or two kills, do it. Because you'll be a useful asset to your teammates. You will at least trade yourself and your teammates are going to have higher chances of winning that round. So this play, okay, risky as fuck, but you have a ghost anyways. You call the rain off guard. Somehow we killed the Sova. I don't, I don't want to talk about that. So like, all good. All good, One all good. Remaining. All good, all good. Very good, very good. I like it. I like it actually. It's okay. Never give in. Listen, as long as the team play game is working, five man pushes are working, keep abusing that, like, that is the easiest way for you to actually win a match in Valorant. As soon as the team play game stops working, then we need to split the map a bit more, flank, lurk, default, and that type of shit. Now, right now, because enemies are once again like held by eco probably. We can just push Ace together and that's it. No, no, Reina, Reina. Uh, Turkish kebab on the A site. A site. French croissant, A site. You know. Balkanishan. Balkanishan dish on the A site as well. Reina. Reina. London breakfast, London tea is on A site as well. I don't know which, you know, like. And please, for the love of God. Like, this is why you need to understand. Like, even if you're remaining a duelist, controller, no, sentinel, initiator, I don't give a fuck what you're remaining in Valorant. You need to know what is good, bad, and optimal smoke utility usage. Bro. What the fuck is Viper doing this whole match? Like, what the fuck is this? You know, maybe in some equal and half by rounds, this wall to split the sighted half is okay. You know, to take this, you know, to fight, to isolate the enemies in two sectors. Maybe some weird war like this, or some shit like this. It's okay to experiment. But in a full by round, tell that Viper brother, I need that wall on top of the screens. Can you do it like this? You're pushing B side. Tell that Viper brother, I need a wall that looks, you know, like this or what, wherever the fuck you want to do, you know, wherever the hell he is doing the wall from. Like, uh, you you need, on attacker side, you need to, and when you're playing duelists, you need to micromanage your controllers, you need proper smokes, and you need to micromanage, like, your initiators. Just, you know, ask for the flash, ask for the... Recon utility stuff like that. What the other duelist is doing, who cares? And what like uh, your sentinels are doing also doesn't matter. Like just pay attention to their utility usage, and if you can correct them, correct them. Uh, it's always good to try to correct your teammates. If you notice a mistake, probably your teammates are gonna fuck your whole family and maybe leave the chat, and they're gonna have the ego. But uh, you need to notice this type of mistakes. That's why the number one thing that you need to learn in Valorant is what is G O B Good, bad, and optimal. If you don't understand what is good, bad, and optimal, utility usage for every single character, it's really hard to make uh, good game decisions uh, during a game. That's why game knowledge in Valorant is everything, brothers. This is more like a six. This is like a G. Top G. Mm. And rotate. Bring them down. <laughs> okay, this execute that you, that you did here, uh, it's kind of pointless. Like generally speaking, when you're pushing the A set of ice box. Primarily try to use your dash ability to fight the enemies. You can easily reach this position if you just do this and this. And then from this spot, fight the enemies with the dash ability. So you primarily want to use the dash ability to fight the enemies. Not really to execute something. You want to pressure the enemies with the dash ability, you know, execute something, only if you have the close range weapons and you need to get into the enemy's face. 
or if you need to take some more space from the, your teammates. But move with your teammates primarily. Like what you did here, you know, dashing on top of the 4th end generator is most of the times pointless. You can get up here without dashing if you choose the right moment of time to get on top of this position. Is the race pathing on Icebox Ace sim similar to Jet? I generally follow this pathing with every character. I don't know. Like, I, I just feel in my solo queue matches, especially if you're below Immortal 3, th your teammates are kind of scared to move from the upper ground. And it is so important to abuse, Here. you know, Here. these positions. It's so easy to refrag your teammates and just learning how to have the flu fluidity in your movement around the ropes and learning to, you know, navigate yourself through all of these positions is very important. Especially when you're playing jet, like, you know, you can do so many different things and so many different, like, fast executes to surprise the enemies. Like, imagine you do this, like, for an example. You get up here, you do this, then from this position you fight the enemies, activate the dash ability, how no one is there. Maybe I can use a smoke here, get on top of my viper wall, do this. I'm already in the city, bop, 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 bop. Then I kill the enemies on the side, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's so many things you can do to fuck up the enemies based on timing and, you know, make the chaos on the map. Uh, now, I generally try to avoid this type of a fight that you're taking from top of the tower. I much, you know, what, what I love to do on top of the A tower, I primarily try to surprise the enemies. How? Like, I'm gonna be hiding like this and waiting for the moment of time when they're pressing the W key or when they clear this position to actually peek them and kill them. Or waiting for the enemies to pick a fight with my teammates and then ba ba booy ba ba ba. Or maybe playing this position to kill the enemies going rafters. Then jumping up, killing those enemies. Like, this fight, I don't know. You know, if I peek you like this, it's a 1v1 fight. I, I always place my crosser up here. You're probably gonna die. This fight ain't worth it. I think you can just surprise the enemies with a peeker's advantage, better crosshair placement than, you know, when the enemies already uh, clear this position, just ba ba boo ba ba ba. Enemy kill. Okay. Okay. This is the first time that enemies flanked and lurked during this game. Uh, now. You know, starting from the next round, we need to expect this type of a lurk and flank 24-7. Generally speaking, one uh, one piece of advice that I can give you is like, uh, uh, if you plant a spike on some bomb site and you don't have sentinel's utility to hold your back, and none of your teammates are holding your back properly, you should hold the back of your allies primarily. Like, if I don't see some enemies for like 10 seconds, and they're not retaking the sites fast, there is... 60% of chance that they're waiting for some kind of a lurk or flank to be completed. I mean, there was no reason for this Cypher and Reyna to wait this much in the CT area of the map unless they're waiting for a lurk and flank by this jet. Enemy we win. We survive. Okay, this round we didn't lose because our execute was bad or enemies were something better. We just lost it because enemy jet flanked us. We didn't obs observe that possibility. Now we can easily adapt and we can punish that jet. Oh, God help me. Okay. If we're going for this type of a play, with op oh, first of all, I would never go for this type of a play with Operator or Outlaw. It takes too much time to get the gun in the hands and scope. It is stupid. For this type of a play, I would go with automatic weapons. Vandal, Phantom, ga ga you know, whatever, Guardian, Bulldog. Uh, and when you're going for this play, this is the proper way to do it. You have three ways, actually. First way, tell one of your teammates to use a flash for you. I don't know. Yoru flash, Reina flash, any flash. And then, updraft without jumping. Updraft... Crouch and uncrouch. 
so that your aim, your recall, your, yeah, basically recall is resetted as soon as possible. Like, updraft, crouch, bam. You're ready to shoot immediately. Second thing. Smoking, updrafting, using a dash ability, and basically picking the enemies in a straight fight, trying to get a kill, that's it. With the ultimate, we can go for this play without any problems, I mean, just jump, ba 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 try to kill the enemies, pre-aim for the headshot angle, for the ropes, and that's it. And essentially, that's it. With the operator outlaw, bro, never. I, look at this. I need like two, three seconds to be able to to shoot at the enemies. Okay, our object position was actually good. When you're objecting on this spot, you always want to align yourself with this line. Right here. Why? Because enemies here, 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 and there don't see you. Look at this. Like you do this. And only thing that you need to observe is that, ropes, this, and this. But usually when the enemies are playing window, they play on the left side there. So you see these angles only, and then we can clear, like, you know, this position, this position, that position, methodically. Like that's how you're overexposed from the minimum amount of angles while doing this play. To be honest, you can also move a bit more. Like, like this, actually. Towards this uh, arrow there. And then doing that. That's better. Please, uh, from now on, if you're pushing through the belt, uh, Always clear this angle as well. Like it's, I play that position 50% of times on 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 a side as my secondary position, or I don't know, even first position sometimes. It's so easy to get the frags. No one is expecting this off angle. Like I don't know, I just get too many kills, man. Too many kills. This round is only fucked up because of the Viper wall. I don't know where the Viper Platinum Diamond Viper saw this wall. Probably on the stream of Joel's TV. But, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, what the fuck is this? I'm just joking. Of course, Joel's is okay. Spike is down. Spike down A. One enemy remaining. Can okay, we know the cipher is above us? Cipher is above you. Last player standing. Yikes. I don't know, man. Like your your game awareness and, and, and audio awareness is like zero points. We're gonna fix that with some kind of a training. I don't wanna repeat myself. You see what I'm talking about? You should be dead. You should literally be dead. If you're going for this peak with Operator, Reyna needs to give you a flush. Your Reyna needs to give you a flush. I don't know. And I just want to repeat one more time why am I not talking about his mechanical skill? And mechanical mistakes is because he's missing everything to some degree. Reaction time, micro corrections, movement disconnected from aim, like uh, there's so many small mechanical problems in every fight. And I'm just gonna give him some general aim training routine that is gonna focus on everything. Fuck it. You're gonna use that general aim training routine like for two, three months, and then after two, three months, we can do another word review and make some kind of a more specific training routine for you. Like there's so many of small mechanical problems. Okay, this is really good. I like it. I like it. There. Listen, the best angle to hold the push of the enemies from behind is this angle. Especially if you have the operator. 
Like this is how I hold the push of the enemies behind. Tight angle, place my crosshair here, watch for the enemies there. They're probably gonna walk. They're very real, you know, very rarely they're gonna run. Easy kill, repositioning, and that's it, baby. No reason to hold this, where the enemies can peek you from there, from here, and from here. Three angles. Flying, 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 flying. How the fuck is Reina behind us? But probably because of the stupid wall. And probably nobody cleared the nest. Dash ability activated. Dash ability activazione. Activazione. No activazione of dash ability in a 1v1 fight with the operator. Respect. Respect, bro. Bro, I need to remove my tracker for this sect. Like, uh, people are gonna think that. That I'm actually try harding this sect. <laughs> <laughs> only, only check the X where, where I actually got Radiant. Where I have more than 1,000 hours. Uh, wait, what, 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 what the fuck? May I, may, may I ask, like, uh, so our five man pushes are working, you know? Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a big charlatan, man. Just a second. That's two charlatans. That's three charlatans. Do we have any more? No, here. Uh, okay. Uh, so five man pushes are working. Enemies have no idea how to defend A site. Your, your four of your teammates are going A. You have the operator. You don't know if the enemies are going to push B main area of the map and how they play on B. Why risk it? Keep doing what's working for us, like enemies are stupid. Why are we doing this? I mean, maybe we're gonna get a kill. Maybe not, I don't know. But the problem is, like, we still cannot trust our teammates. I mean, on a defender side, that was really, 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 really bad. We still need to play with them. Down a. Play with your teammates. Play with your teammates. Play with your teammates. This angle is terrible. This angle is terrible. See ya. Terrible angle. No, no, no. You, you, you only got that kill because Sova started running and, you know. It, it's better if you're holding the flank, especially with a, as I said, like operator outlaw and stuff like that. It's better for you to do this or to hold the flank from the belt. If you're playing here and your teammates are on the bomb site. There's not a lot of angles from which enemies can kill you. You know, if you have teammates in the pipes, teammates on the site, enemies cannot kill you here. Only if they, I don't know, get on top of the site, but your teammates should be able to see them. You can hold it from this position as well, take a kill, be ready to support your allies, that's it. But play here while your teammates are on site, what? Hey, DJ. Last player standing. <laughs> Map awareness zero points. Visual awareness zero point. Everything zero points. Spike is perfectly planted for you. Scenario cannot be better. We have the operator dash ability. Spike planted for us. We want to push the enemies with the operator and a shorty. In a one versus two. Okay, give yourself just just before you make some kind of a decision from now on. Even if that makes you lose the timing or lose the round, lose the match, I don't give a fuck. We need to practice this. Deep br <sighs> for three seconds. Ask yourself, what do I see on the minimap? Where is the spike planted? What should I do? Like, give yourself time to think. You know, it is better for you to lose the rounds in Platinum now, where you where you usually have, you know, in a Platinum, Diamond, Ascendant, Gold, all of the lobbies below Immortal, 
you have more time to think. You know, you always have like two, three, four, five, maybe even six seconds of time before you need to make some kind of a game decision. Check the minimap. Ask yourself where this where do you see the enemies, what the enemies can do, are all of the enemies on the site, and then make some kind of a what type of gun you have, and then make some kind of a decision. Like it is better for you to lose the round at this stage of your gameplay and level. Because you didn't make a game a proper game decision in time. Rather than losing your rounds and losing the matches because you're making rushed out game decisions that are bad. One enemy remaining. Never mind, he's a giga chat, bro. Uh, oh, shorty time, huh? Behind you, behind you! On top of you, on top of the site! Yeah. I mean, it. it was it really logical for enemy Reyna to go left if you killed the jet from the right? I don't know, but also like, you know, because he had the operator... I don't know if using a short... you know, you, you don't need to use... You don't need to... How can I explain this? Like, you don't need to force yourself to use a shorty, like... Uh, generally, I use the shorty only if, I, if I'm really close to the enemies, if uh, I'm playing some kind of an eco halberd around... In this example, if I was like... 20 HP, maybe I would use a shorty, but I don't know. I don't know if this was really necessary, like, but... For me, it was not kind of logical that Reyna is gonna go at the backside. I don't know. Like, this was a huge gamble, to be honest. It's okay, it's, it's okay. You learn from your mistakes, like, you know. I don't know why I mean, if I, why am I even talking about this round? There was absolutely no reason to dash onto site and fight the enemies in a close range duel. Spike was kind of, you know, planted for him. He can see a bit of the spike, you know. He, 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 he could have definitely got at least one kill on one enemy if he had just held the spike from this position. You know, held the push of the enemies. And then you kill one enemy, second enemy is defusing the spike, dash ability, this. Easy kill. Do you have my Spotify account? Or where did you get my playlist from? Please clear the nest. Please clear the nest. Please clear the nest. Please clear the nest. Please. Clear the nest. Please, clear the nest. Please uh... I'm I'm not gonna speak about this round. I'm sorry, chat. I I just I'm not like he done all of this. He took all of these kills without activating their ability once. Respect, utmost respect, utmost respect for this round. Like I'm not gonna speak about it. <laughs> uh, listen, generally, if you have the operator. Operator like with uh, jet like try to you know in this elo it's so easy to get the kills like with a proper crosshair placement from the belt you know if the enemies are playing some of these common positions like you have the operator just you know you can do this like you know clear these angles clear that angle clear this angle that angle that angle these angles like you know there's no reason for you to go through the lower ground. Demon, man, what? demon. What? How did I die? What? What? Uh, one thing that I don't know if he's actually talking, 
I, I know nothing about his communication. I don't know if he was just silent during this whole game. Or the... He, he, he probably didn't say anything, man. Like, if you hear that enemies are behind us, like... I yell at my teammates, Hey guys, flank, 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 you know, like... I mean, my communication is not, nothing special. You know, I just give my teammates the most... What I see, what I wanna do, and... The most necessary, you know... Comms. This is a necessary comm. Okay, we killed two enemies behind us. We know that Sova is on the A site. Probably Brimstone is on the A site as well. Or Cypher. Let's rotate B. We don't need to hit A. I'll find you. Yeah, they, they, I think they're all on. Hmm. Okay, this game decision to play with the Reina is okay, a bit risky because of the operator. But, you know, usually I love playing with my most aggressive teammate. Reina has the highest chances of dying, so it's okay. Just, I don't know if I would have done this with operator going through mid, you know, like, and I have to clear so many different angles. Hello, Sova. Okay, we activate the dash ability once, because one enemy is below us, literally. Is there one enemy behind him? One enemy no, behind he, that's uh, Brimstone below us. Okay. This cipher can also be on the right side. What the fuck is this position? Reposition yourself. Generally speaking, after, after every single kill in Valorant, like, uh, you should choose some other position, especially with a movement type of character such as Judd. He can be in the tube on the right side. We don't see all of these angles. We should 1x scope here to see the bottom of the tube. I mean, you're on 1x hope, you're just way too close to the tube. You can also be inside of the tube right now. Bad position. Priority as a safety, we talked about it. We talked about this as well. You saw the Cypher trip there, we can destroy it. Cypher is probably playing in the pipes with some kind of a shotgun. And, uh... Chamber is gonna die. One of your teammates is dead 100% because of it. Cypher is in the pipes. We saw the tripwire. We saw the smoke. Enemies utility usage can always give you, you know, tell you what the enemies are doing. I, uh, there's no way the Cypher is not playing here at this moment of time. Like, I would be super focused with the shorty. And operate. I would just be... I need to punish the Cypher before he punishes the rest of my team. Below you. Below you. Below you. Below. They're blind with fear. Bring them down. One enemy remaining. Sova rafters. Full. Pay attention. Pay attention. Like uh, enemies' body posture, enemies' utility usage, how fast enemies are pathing through a certain position can always give you the information where is the rest of the enemy team or what is the current enemy doing. But this gets better as your game knowledge gets better, like, you know. That's why what reviews exist. And guides on YouTube. And, uh... Not really if you're watching, like, Joel's TV, but... I'll find you. Lock sight. Get out of my way! You're nothing. Uh... This was terrible. Like, first of all, it's okay. You know, like, if your teammates are pushing you through the tube, uh, you have the operator, yes, like, you can updraft here, and from this spot, try to fight the enemies. But from this spot, I would first clear the boiler, then I would clear that, uh, basically, window position, with this crosshair placement. After I clear the window, I'm gonna clear this, and then clear the site. And after I use the updraft, from that moment on, I don't want to spend more than five, more than four seconds on top of the tube. That's already too much. I immediately want to make some kind of a game decision, either to move with my teammates, or to basically take more space for my allies somewhere. And anyways, uh, you know, if your teammates already decide to push, like, uh, such a claustrophobic area to the maps, and you have a great economy, you know, like, or, I don't know, the match is like 10-12, 
drop the operator from the map. Aha, we are going mid. Let's buy the Vandal. It's better for you to have a Vandal in this scenario than having the operator. Or if you have the ultimate, use the ultimate anyways. It is maybe the last round of the match. It's not gonna cost you anything. We have the great economy for the, you know, every round matters. But, one thing that I don't understand, a site was a piece of cake for us. Why stop doing something that is already working for you? If enemies couldn't figure out a solution for your A push for the previous like 3, 4, 5, 6 rounds, why do you think they figured out something right now? Especially on the simple maps such as Breeze and Icebox. Like the best advice is like, as long as something is working, keep abusing it until it stops working. And when it stops working, try it one more time. Who knows, like, maybe that, that will be more unpredictable than actually changing things up. Like, I don't know. Why do we all of a sudden decide, like, let's push through the tube and push through the mid, like. When enemies were terrible at defense of A-set, like, they had no solutions whatsoever. Okay, I think we covered enormous amount of topics. Anyways, this one is already too long, in, in, in my opinion. Uh, basically, like, uh, after this VOD review, I'm gonna share you through the private messages the training that I want you to do for two months. Uh, that training, I think, is gonna fix, like, 60% of your problems, maybe up to 80%, we're gonna see. And then in one or two months from now, we're gonna see, like, uh, you know, what you should do next. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comment, join my Discord server for all of the good stuff. Voila! Mwah!